to my channel if you're new on this channel my name is Chiso and I'm a software engineer and youtuber based in Lagos Nigeria and welcome to another tech video so in this video I'm going to be answering a series of questions that I got from my Twitter poll I reached out to some of you on Twitter and I asked you guys to ask me some tech related questions that I'll be answering on this video so if you ask me a question stay tuned to the end of this video so you can hear my reply to your question and if you also want to learn from other people as well this is an opportunity to do that so let's get to it so the first question says um how do you deal with the discouragement of the journey being very long especially when starting out learning a particular technology um this is a very good question and i think it applies to literally everybody when you are learning tech skills or when you are picking up a tech skill i would say that it sometimes gets very daunting and it's very challenging but the big question is how do you pick yourself up i think i made a video um recently on how to stay motivated while learning how to code you can check out that video as well but what i would say in this video is that always have like a foresight always envision yourself where you want to be right you're in the tech space you know very well that you're going to start getting paid you know very well that you're going to start getting your skills are going to start getting valued by people so just see yourself in that space see yourself in a place where you're even teaching others what you know now and you're doing amazing things with the skills that you have that discouragement is going to come but if you have like if you envision where you're going to be in the next two years in the next three years trust me that is going to encourage you i remember when i got started in tech i always envisioned myself with gadgets coding programming building very fun stuff and having people use the things that i build on my devices so that was it for me and it worked so that's without advice how do you navigate the whole networking thing? Lately, I've been trying to connect with some people and companies I love, but it's been rough. I'm trying to transition from being a product manager to a data scientist. Any tips or advice to make this process smoother? Hmm. Networking is a huge ball game. And I would say that um, networking is not that easy the way people say it is. You reach out to people, number one, they don't answer you. Number two, people are just so busy to reply you so try to leverage um indirect mentorship or indirect networking where you're not actually talking to the person but you're learning from the person on a daily basis if you're looking to transition from a product manager to a data scientist follow data scientists that you admire and just see what they're doing and also aside from leveraging indirect mentorship try to ask questions in the open try to ask questions in public as long as people can answer you in their dms they're always open to to reply in your social media. So if you have a particular question, you can even type this question on social media, say, oh, I'm trying to transition from being a PM to being a data scientist. And the data science community or the data community is very large, it's budding, it's energetic. Trust me, there are definitely going to be people that are going to advise you on the best routes to go through. This person is asking, I started learning PHP a month ago and I built four projects, but my dream is to work at a company like Google and Microsoft. Should I learn GoLang instead? Plus, I'm not really interested in web development. So I would say, I would see this person as, you don't really know what you want to do, but you know the company that you want to work in. And I always give people this advice, right? It's not really about the company. It's not really about working at Microsoft. It's not really about working at Google. Are there products there that you love at these companies that you would like to contribute to, that you would like to build as a software engineer or as a developer? Are you seeing products in Meta or in Netflix or even in um, international companies? Is there something there? Is there a team there that you're passionate about joining? So rather than looking at the company from a standpoint of, oh, this company has a big name, I would like to work in XYZ company because it's big. Try to focus on the tools that the company is using or the products that you would love to contribute to. So this gives you a certain kind of intentionality when you're applying for this job. So that when you're applying and you're doing your interviews, they know where your interest lies. They know that you've done your research and this is what you want to do. So once you figure out what you want to do and you figure out the team that you want to work for in these companies or the products that you would love to build in these companies, then you can now know the skills to learn so that you can put yourself in a better position to get employed for those particular teams. So everybody, I feel like people should get the narrative of I want to work in a big tech company. They're just blindly saying it, right? So be more intentional about the product that you love to build in that company and not just the company name. So this person is asking, I'm taking courses and learning to be a data engineer. Are there opportunities for an entry level internship positions yearly too? 
Um, entry level data engineering positions. Yes, I think I've come I've come across a couple of junior data engineering roles. But the thing with data engineering is it's quite a huge role, and most of the time you don't really find entry level opportunities for data engineering. But I think I've come across a few. So if you have your post notifications turned on on my Twitter, just be on the lookout in case I post it, and I will be sure to let everybody know when that particular job role is available. But are there a lot of internship or entry level data engineering opportunities? I am not sure, but there are a few. But you can always do your own research and find out if there's any that you see. So this person is asking, I would love to improve my DSA skills. DSA stands for Data Structures and Algorithms. Even though I'm taking a course and I still can't solve easy questions, I feel like this was me in 2020 when I was trying to learn how to solve DSA questions. If you're taking a course and if you're struggling to answer easy questions, it means that you're not practicing enough. It means that you're not fully immersing yourself into the problem solving um, pool, right? So the thing with DSA questions, the more questions you solve, the more proficient you become become at it right so i would say that if you cannot answer easy questions go on youtube right if you spend your time on a particular question i know you cannot answer it go on youtube see the thought process of these people that are solving it there are so many youtubers that i followed when i was learning dsa and when i started watching them for like a month or two i realized that most of them have the same problem solving technique and while i was watching them i tried to like invite those skills or that mindset to to my own problem solving skills so that if i'm solving a problem and i'll be like oh what would nick white do or oh what would this guy do who oh, i think he would do this or he would go about it in this way so as i started doing that it became easier for me to decipher problems and to even move forward to even solve medium to hard questions so don't beat yourself up about it try to understand the problem solving process all these things have a process that's why they're called algorithms they have a certain process and if you can hack that process then you can literally solve any question i would also advise that you should focus on basic operations for any data structures that you're solving basic operations like how to insert how to transverse how to search how to sort how to um, look for duplicates those very basic things and once you've tried your hand on all these operations then solving other questions will just be a matter of understanding the question interpreting the code to like an algorithm and just solving it so i wish you the best of luck and i know that you're going to start doing good at it if you do want to ask this question please do you know any tech community giving out free laptops i am 19 years old and i have a passion for tech i got a scholarship for two 3d animations and i would love a free laptop because i really want to learn this skill so there are a lot of communities giving out laptops i'm so proud of communities that have taken up this initiative to provide laptops for people i know there is laptop for developers i don't know if they are still very active like they used to be i know there's edu stipend there is um she code africa she code africa gives um the sponsor laptops for women and a bunch of other communities as well so i would say be very active in the tech twitter space when you figure out the communities that are doing these things Try to be active as well in those communities so that you can either join a waitlist or um, get a laptop in like two, three months of joining. I want to start coding like right now. How do I begin? Um, how do you start? I would say coding is built upon a computer science background, right? So you would appreciate coding if you have a computer science background. I'm not saying you should do a BSc. I'm just saying that you should try to get some foundational CS knowledge first so they can actually appreciate coding and the usefulness of programming. So I'd advise you take the Harvard CS course. It's a computer science course that you can take to learn about computers. I think in that course too, they did like something on web development, HTML, CSS. So once you're done with that course, you can now pick a language, you can freestyle, you can pick Python. Python is good, beginner friendly, has a lot of nice stuff. Java 2 is good. You can start the HTML, CSS, JavaScript route. I mean, any route to find yourself, but coding is a very big world. If you want to start researching now, it's a rabbit hole. So that's why I advise you to start with the Harvard CS course and just get a little bit of understanding of what you're doing and the value of what you're doing and just scale from there. How to enter open source or mentorship programs to enter the community of development? question is weird. 
But if you want to get started in open source, there are a lot of open source fan people on Twitter. I'll mention one person that I really love and I'm proud of. Um, a GitHub star, her name is Ruth Kinga. So if you want to know anything about open source, reach out to her and she's going to put you through and she's going to plug you in, into communities that would help you. Then mentorship program, I'm, I don't really understand the second part of the question, but please, if you want to ask this question, leave a comment so I know exactly what you meant. Next question is, my question is, how do you secure a remote job? I'm based in Lagos and I would like to get a remote job as a DevOps engineer. Recommend platforms to apply for these jobs. I saw a thread on LinkedIn where someone like outlined about 12 of these rules. So if I've come across that thread, I will post it in the description box or in the comment section. So there are a lot of places that you can apply for remote jobs. But I would say that you should focus on try to read the job description well because there are also remote jobs that you cannot work from Nigeria. You either have to be in the United States or in Europe, right? So try to read the job description well to make sure that you can work from this time zone and to make sure that you can also work from this, this country. So if I come across those websites, I will post it in the description area or in the comment section. How do you deal with rejections? I've received a lot, a whole lot ever since I started applying. Rejections are very normal. And I think I'm going to do a video. My next video is going to be on why you get rejected. There are several reasons why you get rejected. But this person is asking, how do you handle rejections? Rejections are normal. I would want to come here and say rejections are redirections. But if you're not putting yourself in the position to get accepted as an employee, I won't say re rejections are redirections for you. I would say you still have some work to do. Try to mirror what, try to mirror the things you're using to apply. Mirror your resume, ask people for feedback, even ask the company for a follow-up email if they're going to reply. So there are a lot of things involved. Sometimes it might not be your fault. Sometimes it might be your fault. So I would say try to mirror everything you're using to apply. Talk to somebody. Tell the person to gauge your resume, gauge your skill set, gauge your soft skills, gauge your technical skills to make sure that you're not just missing anything. I want you 100% sure that the problem might not be coming from you. You just know that it's from the company or maybe you applied late or the company has like filled the quota for that role. Or the company just found someone that's way better than you. So most times it's not your fault, but sometimes it's your fault. So the next question is, I'm doing really well in tech. How can I do more? I would say just keep um, learning, keep upskilling, and also try to improve what you already know. Try to learn from other people that are higher than you. Try to um, impact knowledge, impact people as well, because. There is a whole lot of things to learn in the tech space. So if you can impact that knowledge on other people, teach people, um, leverage the network that you have, learn from other people. Don't be so adamant on the things that you already know. Don't say, oh, I already know this technology. I don't want to learn any other technology. When you know that five more technologies have come out and you're in the past. So try to upskill. If you know things that are in your industry that are new and you don't know about them, Try to learn them. You might not necessarily use them in your workplace, but just have an idea about them and how it's being used. So you just keep staying relevant. So that's how to do more. But my own version of doing more is impacting other people with that knowledge that you've gotten. I'm a product designer who is interested in learning Android development. As someone who has never written a line of code before, how do I go about it? This is very good. I'm smiling because I was an Android developer. So this is really good because as a product designer, you already have some design knowledge. I remember when I launched my first app, I spent a whole bulk of time thinking about color theories, fonts, user interface, user experience. So if you're a product designer, I would want to say a huge congratulations that you already have design knowledge. So passing that knowledge down to mobile development is going to be super big. So I would advise to take the Google's Android development course. It's a free course by Google. I'll post the link in the description box. So you can take that course. If you've not written a line of code before, it doesn't matter. That's all. You can always give yourself room to learn. So the native coding language for Android is Kotlin. So if you take the Google course, just see the flow of that course. But the main language you focus on is Kotlin and other things like Jetpack Compose, which is also in that course. So I would advise that you check that course out. 
how long does it take to land your first job after learning to code um good question but it's very relative to the individual and how you learn and the time that you give yourself so i would say some people it takes a year some people take six months but some people it takes like maybe two years before they land their first jobs so it all depends on you on how fast and efficient you assimilate knowledge it all depends on how you have used those skills that you have learned to build stuff and to be employable as well so it's not about getting into tech it's about what have you used that what have you used those skills to build and how have you been able to showcase those skills for people to employ you so it heavily depends on you so if you're learning something try to showcase what you've built to people and be very vocal about what you know and what you're interested in and what you're passionate about people will definitely find you and people will definitely employ you so getting your first job let's say around eight to eight months to one year or it's heavily dependent on you how do you manage time between working at microsoft and learning a new skill um if we're talking about technical skills here as an employee at a big tech company best believe that you're going to be learning every day <laughs> So I think it's just, it does, there's no straight line between working at MS and learning a new skill. I know that there are several other tools that I need to learn that I'm not currently using in my workplace. So I will be of a disadvantage to only focus on the things I use at work and leave out the things that are in the market or that are trending in the market. So it's just really, really about balance, finding a relationship between what you're working on and what you need to learn and just mixing that up in a certain kind of way. As I said, I just started learning Python, data structures and algorithms and some math to prepare myself for a machine learning journey. Can you host this space to talk about AI and ML and the different sectors? I noticed DS and ML doesn't get talked about that much in data space. It's mostly data analysis. So would I host this space? I might if I see people that are more interested or that have more interest in this in machine learning definitely i'll host this space that's if i see people that will speak on this space so if i look for people that are that will give me the opportunity to host them on this space as machine learning engineers i will definitely do that and i'll grant your request so if you're watching this and you're a machine learning engineer and you would like to speak on a machine learning space please reach out to me i'll be so happy to host you so guys i don't think i can go through all these questions today because questions are a lot i don't want the video to be so long but i'll definitely go through the rest of the questions in another video so look out for my next video i will be posting a video on how to handle rejections and why you get rejected thank you for watching this video don't forget to like this video you guys don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if i answered your question in this video thank you bye